you ready to get on the hot seat with Wally George? Hang on for the wildest, most controversial talk show on television, featuring enthusiastic participation from our live studio audience and interviews with provocative newsmaker guests. And now, here he is, that hard-hitting, award-winning, conservative voice of television, Wally George! You are a disgrace to womanhood. What do you think? You are a blasphemous scumbag. This guy is really sick. Because the majority are not nitwits like you are. And you stupid little pervert. Don't tell me whose turn it is. It's my show, Freako. You're out of here. Good evening. I'm Richard Blade. Tonight, we're going to take a look at a true television pioneer, Wally George. Many have copied, but few can match his popularity. He was the first to discover what has become a television staple, combat TV. And he did it all right here on LA 56. You know, Wally and I shared the same studio when I hosted Video One for KDOC TV. And I have so many memories from those days. And tonight, with help from friends and colleagues, we'll share some of them with you. Wally well, started on LA 56 in 1983, a little after the station went on the air. The show was a weekly conversation based around conservative views, and it didn't differ much from other talk shows of the day. The Wally George Show did fine in the ratings, but months later, when KDOC hired a new general manager, Mike Volpe, he knew it could be something more. Mike introduced Wally to the out-of-the-box thinking producer, Arnie Evans, and suddenly, the hot seat was off to the races. My first memory of Wally was when Mike Volpe told us that um, he had an idea about a show um, with a guy named Wally George, and we were going to call it the Wally George Show. And he said, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of bringing this guy in to do a talk show. He was doing a show in, in L.A., and it was called, it was the Mayor Yorty Show, and he was the co-host on the show. He said he's a little political, but all-American, and I think he'll fit with the format. So I want to try something different with him. We're going to try him out, try and sell some advertising on his show, and see how it works out. I think it was like around the third episode or fourth or one of the first half a dozen where the guy came on and got all upset over something that Wally said and he, and he flipped that desk over. And that's the one that really sent the whole show into, into orbit. He was a true original. He, <laughs> he had his beliefs and everything and he stood up for himself and he, you know, he would get in real discussions on, on the show and, you know, he stood up for what he thought he believed and, you know, you got to give him credit for that. Wally was indeed an original and for you longtime fans, you'll have an hour of smiles and laughs and for all you newcomers, you're in for something very special, something you've probably never seen on television before and the show that started a television genre. When we come back to Wally George remembering the hot seat, Wally's unique views on politics and religion. Are you hinting that, that Mikhail Gorbachev is homosexual? It's a biological fact. And we're back. And Welcome back to Wally George remembering the hot seat. Wally made it no secret that he was a staunch conservative. And because of that, politics and religion were recurring topics on the hot seat. And though they were common topics on other TV shows as well, no one discussed religion and politics as passionately as Wally. When it came to his idol, Ronald Reagan, any guest that dared speak out against him or President Bush was an instant target for Wally. Let's take a look. I think you're leading these people astray. Oh, oh wait a minute. You think I'm leading... I think, you're leading, I, I think you're leading them astray because you're leading them to believe that Ronald Reagan and conservatism can save America, and that's a lie. Oh. Now, hold on. Now, I, I, voted, I voted for Reagan hold before on. you were born. Hold on. I voted for Reagan last time, but he's not going to save America without God. Hold on. You have to have God to have America Hold on, saved. Pastor. You're not in your church, you're on my show now. I was listening to your followers over here and they're proclaiming that 
they think uh, Ronald Reagan is the Antichrist 666. I like oh, to, come on. I'd like to know. Uh, Did they really say that? Yeah. yeah. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. This may be the end of the interview. Let me ask, hey, Lightning, over here. Yeah. Do you believe Ronald Reagan is the Antichrist? Oh, I believe anybody who doesn't live. Answer about Ronald Reagan. Do you, yes or no? Well, I'm trying to explain. No, I want a yes or no. Do you believe Ronald Reagan yeah, is the I Antichrist? Yeah, I think he's anti. Oh, get out! was a nutcase and Wally just absolutely loved him because he was crazy and so that's why they got along and and why he wanted them on the show all the time um, I do remember Rudy singing and dancing around our office before he we went on air why do you say that that Reagan that President Reagan should not have conducted this meeting with Gorbachev because Gorbachev is a fat man why well, first of all, there's a higher incidence of homosexuality among fat men than thin men. <laughs> that's Rudy. Rudy. Well, well, that's correct. Rudy. Rudy. It's wait, Rudy. It's are a you? Hold on, Rudy. Are you hinting that that Mikhail Gorbachev is homosexual? It's a biological fact. It is a biological fact that when a man gets fat. There's a decrease in the production of the male hormone testosterone and an increase in the, fe in the production of the female hormones testosterone and estrogen. Pro estrogen and progesterone. Indicating the fat man, the fat man is making himself effeminate. And if he goes fat enough, if he goes fat enough, he'll begin to lactate. I allege, I allege, I allege that, hold it. I allege, I allege that Gorbachev has been breastfeeding Ronald Reagan and the oh. American people. The word that came out yesterday from George Bush is if taxes are raised, they will be raised on the rich and not the middle class well, or the poor. Oh, talk is cheap. Yeah. Lying scoundrel. He knew it when he said it. He was either Don't a, you dare call our president a lying, a lying scoundrel. scoundrel. Say he's that one lying, more time. He's a lying scoundrel. He's a lying scoundrel. He's a lying scoundrel. He's a lying scoundrel. Go ahead. You got the guts. You got the guts. Go ahead. Go ahead, big man. Go ahead. Go ahead, big man. Go ahead. You don't have the guts. Our job was to go in there and crush Saddam Hussein. We didn't crush Hold anything. It. Crush Saddam Hussein and bring him to his knees, and we did it. Yeah. And Hussein is still in power. Hussein is still in power. He's still drinking long, tall martinis and stuff in his big bunker underground. There is no way. Hey, who do you guys think you're talking to? You think you're talking to some sissy? Who do you think you're talking to? You ain't talking to me. You're talking to me. George Bush hamstrung poor Norman Schwarzkopf, who wanted to go in there and finish the job in Baghdad. George Bush said, no, my New World Order friends will like uh, ostracize me for going in there and beating up somebody without their approval. Let me tell you something. How do you explain the fact that in the most recent Newsweek survey, 85% of the people of America approve of what George Bush did over there in Iraq? Right off the bat, can I tell you, I am sick and tired of you pukey little peace activists. What about you? You have always been a pain in my neck. You really have. Why are you still hanging around, you radical peace advocate? What are you trying to do? I'm here to tell people that a nuclear war is not survivable. A nuclear war is not winnable. I disagree with President Reagan. I disagree with you. And we need peace on Earth now, or we're going to blow ourselves to smithereens. Oh, oh. And, I'm here, and I'm here to tell you, punk, that the only way we're going to have peace is with Ronald Reagan and peace through strength. Yeah. Do you think Wait this is the How? perfect government, Wally? I do certainly you? do think yeah. This be the perfect government when there's people starving, there's people living in the streets. How well, that, sure. So people like that? you are starving because you haven't got the guts to go out and get a job. Oh. <laughs> no, Wally. 
By the way, do you have a job? Oh, yeah. I, w I work for myself mowing lawns. I don't have... Oh! You, you are actually calling, you're actually calling for... I wouldn't for pay taxes to this government, Wally. Why should I support a bunch of politicians? Wait. Now you're... Wait. Why should I support politicians? Well, Let them get a hey, real I can job. See that you don't... Let the wait politicians get a real job, Wally. Wait a minute. You don't, you don't own, only cut grass, you smoke it as well. Here is a little punk who believes in Darwin's theory of evolution that we all came from monkeys. I want to tell you one thing. He is the best argument in favor of evolution I've ever seen. Yeah. No, no. Do, you really, do you really mean to tell me... I, I mean, can you really, really sit there and tell me that you believe in the theory of evolution, that, that we all came from monkeys? We, as evolutionists, do not believe that we came from apes. We believe that we evolved from a lower form of man. That and was you are the lowest form of man I've ever seen. That was and you repeated it here again to show the kind of hate-filled idiot you are. Towards Jim Baker. He said if, if he had the chance, he would kick Jim Baker in the head oh, until yeah. he was dead. If anyone belongs locked up in a cell, it's this pervert! When we return, we'll see how Wally tackled some of the more sensitive issues of the day. AIDS is a racial disease of Jews and Negroids that minute, also eradicates the faggots and sodomites. Praise God for AIDS. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It's great having AT. Welcome back. Wally was never shy about discussing topics that were, at the time, considered not appropriate for television. Wally addressed such subjects as racism, sexism, and AIDS. These taboo topics formed the basis of his popularity. Take a look as we share more amazing hot seat moments. Wait a minute, Irv, answer this Wait little idiot. Irv Rubin, who do you speak for? You don't speak for Americans. You don't speak for Jews in Israel. Who do you speak for? Answer me! Let it talk. Oh. Go ahead, Irv. Go ahead, I speak right. for myself. I speak for the conscience of the world. I speak for everybody who loves this country. And I want you to know, here he sits... For a small Let him talk! Let him talk! Let him talk! Shut up! Shut up! Hold, hold on, hold, hold on, I want, to, I want to respond to this. Let him talk. I want to respond to this. I want to respond to this. Talk in the mic. What you see here is a clear example of a person who hates this country. Who hates. Shut up. Let him talk. I will not shut up. Who hates everything this country stands for. Who is a traitor to this country. I'll answer this question if you let me speak. I speak. Let him talk. I speak for every person in this audience who loves this country as I love this country. That's who I speak for. I speak for the broad spectrum of people who adore the Constitution and the United States of America, and I agree with Wally. This man is a traitor. He's a traitor to everything we hold dear. When Metzger came on my show and said that there was no Holocaust... You're damn right I do. You're damn right I do. You believe That's there right. was no Holocaust That's in right. Nazi Germany? The Holocaust is a Jewish lie generated... They have used it for 40 years to bilk American taxpayers out of their hard-earned money so they could attack Arabs and murder them. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on. When I heard, like, Metzger and KK, yeah, I had to actually physically alert the Anaheim Police Department, who then sent some of the National Guard over to 
to uh, secure the building, secure the surroundings, because that was not uh, that was not a good scene when Metzger would come. So it got pretty hectic, pretty crazy. You have done nothing in your putrid life but try to spread hatred and racism all across this great land. Try to tell white people that they are superior to blacks. Try well, to take, not inferior, that's Try to sure. take on the Jews and tell them... We take on anybody we feel like taking on. Yeah. yeah. And, and then he stands up for one of his heroes, Adolf Hitler. Hey. He's one... Hey, uh, hey, uh, coming back and it's no more Mr. Good Guy, you know. He's one of the guys, hey, he's one of the guys who believes the Holocaust never happened. I'll tell you, the Holocaust, 55 million people died in World War II and all people want to do is cry about the Jews. What about all the rest of the people that died in World yeah, War II? Yeah, but, but you are the kind of idiot who walks down the street with burning crosses, and when you were the grand dragon of the Klan, you used to hold these horrifying cross-burning rallies with your white, drip-dry sheets. I walked down the street. I, never, I don't remember ever walking down the street with a cross. I have been to many Klan rallies, burnt the crosses, and I was thrilled to death to do it. Oh. You came on this show and wait a minute. Let me talk. Yeah, go on. You came on this show and you stated categorically that you think that the blacks in this country joined the armed forces not to fight in a war, but to get the benefits. I know that. Everybody know that. Oh. We know that. Everybody know that. We know that. Everybody know that. You not tell, tell me something we don't. I'm not telling. I'm not telling anybody that that they don't. I'm not telling anybody something they don't know. Everybody know that. Well, what what you. What you're saying, what you're saying is an insult to, to the black women. No, it what isn't. Wait a minute, no, I haven't said it yet. No, what you're saying, wait a minute, I haven't said it yet. What, what, what you're saying, what he's saying is an insult to the dedicated, patriotic black Americans who are fighting there because they want to fight there. While we would talk about anything controversial, uh, whether he was against it or for it, anything that's going to rile somebody up, and then he would just basically obliterate them on stage and on camera. Uh, he, he talked from, you know, sexuality to religion to politics, whatever. He could find that he's going to push your buttons. Rhonda, you see, you fail to admit that women who are beautiful like you and have sexy bodies, you use that to get ahead, don't they? Yes, you do. We've had to. We've had to. Okay, look, Red, Red Bush. The ladies in the audience should let me speak. Red Book did a survey, okay? 9,000 women were surveyed. Nine out of 10 working women were harassed at one point or time on the job. 92% um, of these women considered it to be dangerous. Only 18% complained. Do you know what happened to the 18% that complained? They lost their jobs. The work was, um, they were overloaded with work. Um, we can't speak out, and you know why? Because what, what happens is, do? what happens? Is, a rape victim is is protected because their names are at least protected. When you speak out and you say my employer harassed me, it then goes before the press. The press has your name, and then what happens is you're blackballed in your community. You can't work anymore, and then you need a witness to prove that the guy pinched you on your butt. Let me turn it around. Would you like to be pinched on your butt? Hey! She, she can pinch me anytime she wants to. AIDS proves that God either has a strong dislike or a hatred for Jews and sodomites. You're unpatriotic for insulting the flag. Now wait, 
Hey, insulting a flag, you're an, ins you're an insult to America. <laughs> Celebrity guests take the hot seat when we return. I'm warning you, the next time you... Don't drink. warn me, punk! <laughs> Boy, George was even condemned by his own father, Wally George. Did you know that? <laughs> Welcome back to Wally George Remembering the Hot Seat. Wally knew that getting local celebrities on the hot seat would get him talked about and attract viewers to the show. So he recruited top-rated DJs, professional sports stars, and pop icons. Let's take a look at celebrities in the hot seat, starting with one of my many appearances. Look at yourself! It's not Mark! Same. You're hiding behind a sham of republicanism. I am not. You're hiding. on the way out. Reagan's on his way out. Are Look you? at Iran. Oh, wait, wait, wait. He was great. Wait, wait, he was great for four years. Wait, wait, wait. Then he surrounded himself with what, what, incompetence. What you are doing, Blade, and people like you, you're trying to brainwash the youth of America. No, we're trying to wake them up. No, you're we're not. trying to say, if you want to be a Republican, great. I don't if you want to be Hold a up. Christian, great. But if you want to be free thinking, then great, be yourself. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. What you're doing by, by this obscenity, saying dirty things, playing... We don't say wait a dirty minute. things. Keep your big mouth shut for a minute. Whoa. Rick Dees, that was a pretty fun show. Rick was really silly. He dressed up like um, a, in a jumpsuit, like an Elvis Presley jumpsuit, and he came on and debated with, with uh, Wally. And I, I think one of the reasons Rick did that um, not only because he was the top DJ in LA at the time but also that he was looking uh, to his future maybe a career in television my wife is sick and tired of what you have done and she is going to pay you well, back let me check soon. her green card let me check her oh. green card she's not even legally in the US she, oh, she, oh. We don't have illegal aliens from England. She's an idiot. Too. Who would marry this? David, help me. Who would marry this idiot? Well, the, this lovely girl. You, you apparently, you apparently think My... she's so great that you call her on the no, phone. I'm serious. Somebody just tuned in. <laughs> Does my hair look all right? <laughs> I guess they proved that you don't have a wig on. Yeah. Hold on. My fight to rid this country of Rick D's has just begun. <laughs> I think he's the most disgusting, degrading, filthy maniac ever from K-Power. Here is Jay Thomas. Come on. You had the audacity to go on your alleged program. That's right. And say that you were my illegitimate son. Can you believe that? <laughs> He invited me on the show, right? Yeah, I'll tell you why. All right? Don't no. I look just like Wally? Because, okay. Wait a minute. Hold it. 
Hold it a second. What? Watch this. Ready? Here you go. Hey, let me tell you the truth. Hey, hold on, nitwit. Just a minute. The reason I had you on here, it, hold it, it's to set the record straight. Go ahead. I happen to know yeah. that you are 68 years old and he's had four facelifts. What do you think about that? Stop. Stop. And if anybody, if it's anything, it's the other way around. I could be your illegitimate oh, son. Yeah. I'm sure your audience agrees with me. David Kennedy is a great co-host, but let's face it, he has to chug a couple bottles of Geritol every time before he goes oh. on the show. And, Wally, I have someone that I think could be a great new co-host for you. It may, it may even bring back... Yeah. Should be Wally's new co-host. Oh. No, no, wait, 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 hold on, poor man, poor man. Hey, let's take a Democratic vote. How many people think we should keep David Kennedy? No. <laughs> how many people? How many people think we should have this bimbo? Yeah. Steve Sachs came in and um, really, really nice guy. And they would talk before him and Wally. We're pretty, we're friends. And they, he would sort of coax them into the whole fighting with Wally and being against him. And that's sort of what made the whole show. From the LA Dodgers, Steve Sachs. <laughs> Yeah. I told myself I wasn't going to get involved tonight, but I just can't help myself. And I, I really... I don't want to touch anything here. I don't want to stick to anything. I know the gentleman before me was... Uh, All right. But anyway, sorry. I want to say, how would these people feel, if they're so much for this, about their wife, their daughter, or their mother in this business? Yeah! Not only is this business killing people physically, by this I mean they are spreading herpes, AIDS, which there is no cure for. If you get this, you're dead. You're hey, dead. You ask, not only are they killing themselves physically, but they're killing the minds of America by watching this. Yeah. We got Wally World down here now. We got Disneyland. We got... Universal Studios. But don't you understand, you know, Wally? Hot seat fit into just, just, all minute, this? just a minute. You don't understand, Joiner. When they hold up those signs at Angel Stadium saying Wally World, right. they're not talking about you. Oh, yeah. Those are my fans <laughs> coming to Angel Stadium talking about me. Uh, Isn't that right? No, I, I can't of believe that. Of course no, it's right. I can't believe that. Well, I'm, what I'm trying to figure out is you've been here six years, right? Yes. Uh, Wally World started three years ago. Coincidentally, that's when I stepped into uh, an Angels uniform, correct? You Four years ago, they didn't have Wally World at Angel Stadium. So it has to be me. No, no, it, doesn't you, have, no it doesn't have to sure, be. It has no, to. it doesn't have to be because it just happens that I have gotten more and more popular over the years. Oh, just. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah that's okay. right. There's something I've wanted to do for a long time, <laughs> and now my time has come. Stand by, folks. Wally Joyner, number two Wally, by the way. You, pal, are out of here. Hey, get out. Out, out, out. I think with Timothy Leary, the thing was with Wally, it, he stood for everything that Wally was against, you know? So it was truly a battle for the ages. <laughs> that millions of young people have died or an OD'd and gone bananas because you advocated the use of drugs. Now, what you're putting out is a total 1,000% lie. Is that right? Yes, it is. Well, let me give you a little example. Let me give you a little example. There's that one piece of scientific information. And, Wally, you calm down, Wally. You're not oh, calm oh, down. Oh, hold on. You're not going to... Timothy, this, this hold This is America, Wally. You this is to... America. Don't point that at you, me now, Wally. I'll do whatever I want on my show. Don't order me around. All right. I'm 
mean, you point are... that at me, Wally. Come on, point. You yeah. are a disgrace to mankind, Timothy. Yeah. Yeah. Wally and Morton were very good friends. And he planned behind Wally's back to start his own show, which Wally had no knowledge of. And Wally was furious that he stole his show because he wasn't, he wasn't like Wally. He didn't stand for the things. He was just tr trying to be controversial, stand up at a podium, smoke, get people going. But he didn't have the heart of Wally. You've got an audience of monkeys out here who do everything that you tell them to do. I'm warning you, the next time you... Don't do warn me, punk! <laughs> Stay in your seat. Stay in your seat. Stay in your seat, Wally. Stay in your seat. Morton Downey Jr., who was actually a close friend of Wally's, took some of Wally's most outrageous moments, like the ones you just saw, and then turned them into a successful national television show for himself. Wally never forgave him. Up next, we'll take a look at more outrageous moments on the hot seat. Stick around, you do not want to miss this. Welcome back. I promised you some outrageous moments, and we'll get to those in just a bit. The hot seat broke new ground in so many ways, long before audiences were yelling, Jerry, 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 on today's Jerry Springer show, Wally originated the idea of making the studio audience active participants in a TV talk show. Wally had a love affair with his audience, and their 100% devotion back to Wally was as much a part of the show as were the outrageous topics. Tickets to the show were the hottest commodity in town. If you were lucky enough to get a ticket, you were in for a wild ride. Wally would announce his phone number, and immediately my switchboard lit up like crazy, nonstop. Are you ready? Yeah! Are you ready, Steve? Mike? Yeah. In the uh, 714, it's 999? 5,000! 999! 5,000! I'd get there maybe at 3 o'clock, and they would already be lined up out around the building. Wally, How many you got out there about now? Wally, oh, we got about 150 Wally, out there. Wally, Wally, Wally! is the greatest Wally, American since uh, Richard Nixon. I think the guy's hilarious. Most of the audience were younger people. They, you know, I, <laughs> we never checked IDs, but there was a, usually, yeah, somewhere between 16 and 24. You know, they like, to, they like to have a good time. They might be out in the parking lot partying before they even came in, so who knows? <laughs> Maybe that's some of the people that got thrown out. <laughs> why? Can I ask you why you decided to get into this business? Why? I got into it about three years ago. My girlfriend introduced me, and I love it. I mean, a lot of nice guys like these guys. <laughs> When you, uh, when you go out and you do a stripper gram, when you, when you go out and you do a, do a, a stripper gram thing uh, in front of a guy, I mean, don't you feel embarrassed uh -huh. doing what you do? Well, I think, I think it's very degrading. It's very... say the only way that you can keep a marriage happy and together is to have extramarital relationships. I mean, that's, that's stupidity. Uh, why do you say that? I, I think it adds um, spice to the relationship. To yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, relationship? But, but, to both of ours. But, but, Renee... Wally, if you're with somebody for like... All right, when you get married, it's for life, okay? You've been with somebody for like 10... 15 years it is yeah but you, you love the person you don't want to leave them you love the companionship but you want a little bit of uh you know no way <laughs> Renee, you're not even 40 years old yet. Well, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. First of all, wait, first of all, wait. So far, so 
I want an explanation of what do you mean you want a little uh? I mean, I mean, I mean what does that mean? No, no, Renee. Wally, um, well, you should, I'm sure you know what uh is because you've been through, in the last six month, months, you've been through three girlfriends. Get out of here! <laughs> that these lousy, rotten sex shops only appeal to a bunch of sick perverts. What do you think? <laughs> Mr. George, most of our customers are women. Oh! complain that they're not satisfied. Now, wait a minute. They're not satisfied at home, so they come in for marital aids, for, you know, for their husband or for their boyfriends. What kind, what kind of junk do you, do you I wrote sell? I just in case you would ask. Oh, you wrote down some of your I products. can't remember. I've never been on television before. We have French ticklers. Oh! Wait, we have grass nutcrackers. What? We wait. have Dr. Ruth's good sex game. We have sexual pursuit. Wait, wait, listen to this. We have, we have ring toss, and I'll let you just imagine what part of the males in the Now, right now, wait. tuning in they're only coming to beauty contest to see skin that's all let me ask you well you know wally no 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 wally you know that um in the miss america and miss california um the swimsuit competition only parts for uh 35 percent well I, I don't care that, that's why people watch it that's the whole thing but <laughs> the I wanna... best 35 percent but i'm gonna ask you I mean, don't you feel a little self-conscious parading up and down in a little tiny bikini in front of all these people? You gotta oh, feel... no, no, not at all. Because, you know, there's been lots of girls that have done posters from being seen in a bikini. Um, look at Playboy magazine. They don't even wear bikinis. <laughs> what? You wouldn't, you wouldn't pose in, in, in Playboy magazine. I still say, you, huh? I still say that, that the bikini is not necessary. Don't you think so? <laughs> Just a minute. Wally, I think that we should let this crowd right here determine. Don't you boys want to see some girls in the You should have come and asked me first. Hold on a minute now, you nitwit. I can't even believe I'm... I, I can't even believe I'm sitting in this seat where, where prostitutes and... No, wait a minute. <laughs> now, wait a minute. That stupid... Wait a minute. Hey, that stupid hair doesn't even look like mine. My hair is blonde and his is white. Yeah, your hair... Your hair comes out of a peroxide bottle. Oh. <laughs> Do you actually get paid money to go out and do an impersonation of me? Believe it or not, there's there's deranged people that want you at their party. <laughs> and you can call Entertainment Unlimited, 953-4433. Wait, wait, wait. 953! <laughs>
Wally knew what his audience wanted, and Wally always came through. When we return, we'll take a look at the legacy of the hot seat. Stay with us. And we're back. And then. Over the past hour, we've seen Wally's take on just about everything, from the serious to the outrageous. What about this stupid what, show? What are you saying? I'm not here because of this show. I'm here because Rick Dees paid me to come down here yeah. to do this. Yeah. His guests liked and respected him. The audience loved him, and viewers couldn't get enough. Wally scored a number of television firsts, the first to discuss topics that were controversial and sometimes taboo. Uh, Dr. Kenyon, from the top, you don't smoke marijuana, do you? I have never smoked marijuana, but you sound like you smoked it, Wally. Oh. <laughs> the first to use an audience to generate amazing energy with a host. The first to use unbridled passion about every topic. Tim, why do you want to see children running around naked? Do, do you get kicks watching naked children? Why do you want to see? I want to. I want to protect the children of America. I want to see them modest and moral and decent. Don't you? That's right. Wally could get away with these things because people genuinely liked him. And deep down, they knew that much of what he said was, for the most part, in jest. Wally was definitely the P.T. Barnum of his time. You know, it was a three-ring circus, and he loved it. And he was the ringmaster, you know. Forget about this Jerry Springer business. He was the first one. <laughs> he had some really strange audiences, um, especially dating back to the 80s. Uh, big hair, you know loud, uh, mostly male was in the, in the audience. Uh, they were just really rowdy, and that's what he loved. Uh, the crew would always try to get them riled up. Once Wally would start, these kids would jump up in the audience and they would start chanting him, you know, Wally, Wally, and the, everyone broke out. There was probably a hundred people in the studio at a time, and it, 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 it was, full of energy and it was pretty exciting there was nothing like it um anywhere near it nothing that's controversial nothing as crazy nothing as radical as that show was wally got away with the outrageous things that he did on his show because people really like wally they knew in a way it was an act and they knew that he was such a charismatic person that they were happy to be in the audience to be caught up in the act that Wally was putting out on the air. And he also was a great show person. I mean, he got the audience to get on their feet, to chant Wally, 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 and just be part of the show. For Wally, it wasn't enough to be about him. He wanted to involve the people, and they loved that about Wally. He was charismatic. People loved him, put KDOC on the map. And to this day, when you say KDOC, people say, oh, Wally George. So, I mean, that's, that really is our legacy for KDOC, is Wally George. Wally is still well known. So his legacy is like the start of Jerry Springer and all those other guys, you know. He's left a mark in the TV industry. He came off as kind of gruff and, you know, this hard right-wing conservative, but really he was a puppy dog, you know. You really got to know him. I mean, he was a genuine nice guy. You know, I didn't agree with his politics, and some of it you kind of wonder, was it an act or not, but was it real? I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I think he believed everything he said, though. But still, yeah, he was a great guy, for sure. He's a little on the crazy side. Um, some people didn't care for his personality. Uh, he was a little self-centered, but what show business person isn't? You know, every every entertainer kind of loves themselves. Uh, and, you know, you have to learn to deal with that. 
But at the end of the day, he had something that was, I think, way ahead of its time. We hope you enjoyed this look back at a most remarkable man and his show, The Hot Seat. Wally George will never be forgotten. And in Wally's own words that I heard so many times, Richard Blade, you're out of here. Coming up next, a full classic episode of the original...